Right, it's time for another ride. Which one shall it be tonight? What do I see? I see a little wasp's head. Hmm. I do get togged up I just want to show you something um, I look a bit stupid I've been having a lot of people asking me if my elbows are alright remember me moaning a while ago about my left elbow um, chipped a bit of bone in it that seems to have calmed down a bit I've not done anything done to it but I've been wearing this because I suffer from hay fever and that called a cuchi band is basically you wear it with this little ball bearing on the back of it kind of a ball bearing and you place the ball bearing on the end of the crease there it's acupuncture now whether this is psychological BS or what it works I've I've suffered for about three years with a fever and it's really bad uh, no medicine works for me whatsoever just doesn't touch me a mate of mine recommended this to me because his son has it um, 12 quid I think 13 quid links down below um, I've had it for about a month or more I've not had one single one single symptom since wearing it I don't care if it looks crap or if it looks a bit silly what do you think Gucci band. Link down below. If you suffer with a fever, give it a shot. If it works for you, brilliant. If it don't, it's 12 quid. Right folks, good evening and welcome. So the last time I was on this bike, not this particular bike, but this model of bike, let's just say we didn't get on. So I'm back on one now, and this one is a long term loan. Not from KTM, but from a subscriber, a very good friend who lives up in Norway. He came down to see us uh, not so long ago and he's buggered off back up to Norway because he's coming on our PCOS trip in October. He's flown back to Norway and left his bike with me to use as I wish. So I'm going to um, see if I can gel with the Super Duke R. The only difference between this one, sorry, the two differences between, I'm looking behind me to make sure there's no cars coming. The differences between this one and the the other one I had from KTM was the KTM one was a brand new one and a press bike and this one is a year or two old so the last model and a much loved uh, you know personal bike so it's had all the bells and whistles on it and very much looked after so I shall do the same but let's see if let's see if I just had a pig from KTM or indeed if I just don't like the bike and I'll be honest and uh, tell you let's roll that intro and we'll get into it KTM Super Duke R <laughs> oh perfect timing perfect time to roll the intro just as a car pulled up behind me anyway folks welcome so yeah another evening ride but on somebody's beloved KTM Super Duke car. Now I didn't make a video on the Super Duke car from KTM because I rode it three or four times and I really didn't like it. My uh, YouTuber mates that had recently had it were all singing and dancing about it. Couldn't, couldn't sing its praises high enough. So it had a lot to live up to. And I had just come off the Super Duke GT, the new Super Duke GT, which I fell for. That is one stonking bike, and I love it. I mean, really fell for it. What a machine, what a bike. So, I knew that the Super Duke car had a lot to live up to. One, to sway my mind from the GT being the best bike of its class, and also because of what the other lads were saying about it. Chopsy, Lamb Chop Rides, 
all links down below folks Lamb Chop Ride says you know if he was to change his bike now that would be it Teapot one he did the same he said he was very close to buying one and uh, to me nope nope didn't like it at all at all now I will say Teapot one had it just before me and he broke it all right I don't know how he broke it but black and white is he broke it it was leaking all over his garage floor he made a mess of it somehow then I got hold of it unlucky that it happened to be the exact same bike um, and yeah I totally did not gel with it straight away the left switch gear which is all new on the Duke car on the super Duke car on the new model the left switch gear was um, faulty completely faulty I could see the lights flickering and it, it barely worked none of the switches barely worked couldn't cancel the indicators couldn't do anything so there's something wrong there and because of that contrary to what uh, the boys were saying in my absence on teapot one's podcast that I'd fluffed the settings with my gloves on and then ended up stuck in uh, supermoto mode and it tried to spit me off and almost kill me the left switch gear weren't working so it was stuck in supermoto mode and I couldn't get it out of supermoto mode and thus one night actually coming home down here I'd already made my mind up that I don't I didn't like it it felt flighty at speed it didn't feel solid like the GT I just did not gel with it whatsoever and then coming down this big straight line in fact I'll go up it in a sec but yeah well I'll go up it coming down this road um, perfectly straight road quiet country road like we're on now and the last minute although yeah I braked hard but not too hard you know I've been riding a long time I know what I'm doing um, braked hard to catch a junction that I changed my mind at but not too hard to reach the junction just a nice good braking anyway the back end fully locked up and it took me a while took me a second to realize I think it was going off here this feels weird and I'd not realized that the back end was locked up and it was snaking down the road I thought oh shit I've locked up so I let off all the brakes let it come to a standstill turn around and went back up and quite rightly so there were black rubber all the way down the road I'll turn left here and it was on this road um, and then yeah because it's stuck in sup uh, supermoto there's no ABS on the rear this is the country road this straight bit just after this corner luckily that's where it locked up this straight bit here look perfectly straight I doubt the rubber will still be there now it was a few weeks ago now so. so so I just thought then when it locked up I thought right that's it went straight home messaged KTM and said there's definitely something wrong with it and I, I won't be making any videos on it so you might as well just come and get it I think I got it for another week or so anyway they come and collected it and um, we've since rearranged so in a couple of weeks time I think it is now I'll get another one exactly the same hope it's not the same and we'll see you know we'll see if uh, if it's improved but in the meantime I can get used to this machine that is like I said privately owned um, and if you like this is going to be another subs rides um, but over a long term in fact that's a good point I had my first sub rides was the Harley Davidson that I ended up having for about three years so let's hope this one's going to be the same in fact Kev from Norway actually said he's coming to Picos with us um, in October so he's just he's just flown home from this this weekend's trip left his bike with me to use as I wish and then he's um, flying back down in October to you know be reunited with his bike and we go off to Spain to do the Picos tour but then he said you know in Norway in October we could be six foot under of snow so when he gets back from Picos he's gonna ring his uh, family up there to see what the weather's like and then make a decision whether he's gonna actually ride the bike home or not or leave it with me for another year <laughs> so Brian with the Harley if you're watching this someone might might be beating your record of uh, the longest sub rides loan <laughs> but it'll be a shame if I don't gel with it because uh, it'll just be sat there well mainly I did say you know I will use the bike to make sure it's all good and ready for our trip to Spain and we're, we're just in the beginning of August now so we've got another two months to go I'm very much looking forward to that as well but anyway back to this I do think these style of bikes are hard to keep uh, reined in and I think for me that's what that's that is what would make me 
not really enjoy it because I can't use it to it not its potential because to be let's face it none of us can really use any bikes to their potential um, but you know when uh, you're barely scratching the surface of it it did seem like a waste to me it just seemed like a waste but I'm sure she's a weapon in any case again as always I've not looked into anything about this model I'm just riding it for the very first time and giving you a first rides opinion or a review kind of thing I'm hoping in a way that uh, I know that the Super Duke GT I had had barely been touched because that it had hardly any miles on it so that was as fresh almost fresh out of the box whereas I know at least Teapot One had the Super Duke R before me so who knows what he did I keep looking that side for my camera because I'm used to my camera being that side but on this bike I've got to have it this side who knows what Mr Teapot did to it apart from ruin it so let's uh, let's just keep our fingers crossed that that is what happened <laughs> oh dear it smells down here tonight <coughs> Jesus Christ Oh man, that's rough. It's like sewage. Oh, sewage works over there, isn't it? Because it has a quick shifter up and down. Nice and tight as well. I know a lot of you are going to say... Um... This is a bit too um, closed off now, isn't it? Just adjusted this to stop us coming through it a little bit, but nothing serious. I know a few of you are probably going to be, if I say nice things about this, are going to take it as just because this is privately owned, I've got to be more careful about what I say. Uh, please don't take it as that, you know, I'll be honest to the T as I always am. So, uh, if I'm saying that there's differences in this over the KT or the, over the press bike, it's probably because that had been thrashed and this has been loved. You know, just, just remember that. I know he's got a different pipe on and it sounds incredible. Kev's a very short bloke. In fact, this weekend that we've all been having, uh, this little magical mystery tour we've been on down to Cornwall this weekend. He's been having a lot of stick for being little Kev. Um, and I, I'm on my tiptoes on this bike, so how the hell he copes with that, I don't know. I'm 5'10". And Kev's about 3'10". It's very warm and stupidly humid. Felt the front end lift then. I don't know what settings Kev's got his uh, traction and ABS and stuff on. I, I will have a look in a sec. We'll, have a, we'll pull up and have a walk around it. I'm not going to change any of his settings, but uh, I will have a look what his settings are at. But yeah, Kev himself, he's only, uh, I mean, I, I don't know how heavy he is, but he's only a little, a little bloke. You won't mind me saying that. Um, I would say he's probably only around about the 11 stone mark. 12 stone, maybe. And I'm 15 stone, 15 and a half stone, I think, at the moment. Carrying a little bit of COVID weight. I do love how much punch these bikes have got. They've got so much grunt low down, it's unbelievable. Yeah, so much grunt. But this to me feels like the GT did. Whereas the other one didn't, it felt, I don't know. Nice 20 play bike in front. That looks like it could be either a GS or an Africa Twin. What is it? I think it's a GS. Give that leg a stretch, pal. Go on. See, them on the GS, in if it is a GS, I think it is, in front, going a little bit faster than me, and he's just been one-handed, lifting his leg out, stretching his leg. And that's the difference with, uh, you know, naked bikes and uh, fully fared big adventure bikes. And they're going faster than I am. And look way smoother than I do. And I know this, this, this bike's got new Road 5s on, so I know I can 100% count on those tyres. And obviously I'm barely, barely touching this bike's capabilities, but it's how it makes me feel. It's just weird, isn't it, how you can see the differences like that. These lads are probably just out running their bikes in, because they're only 20 plates. So 
they're probably just out doing a steady run and still going faster than I am. <laughs> I feel like I'm almost chasing them. They've, they're probably they're probably flicking through sat nav settings or look as, as calm and as cool as anything. We were joking actually on the trip in Cornwall when Kev was saying, "Listen, mate, you know, just just use it. Use the bike. I'm not bothered. It's fine." You know, just if you want to, by all means, just put you know three, four, five hundred miles on. And I went, "You are." A week, you mean? <laughs> so much grunt. I'm not sure what the BHP is on this, but I will look into it and I'll click it onto the screen right now. Don't you love the power of technology, eh? I can say whatever information I want, correct or incorrect, and just delete as necessary. Yeah, big GSs, 1250s. Uh, you gotta, you got to have a lot of respect for this engine, folks. If you've never ridden one of these, you must try one. You, you really won't, you won't believe the amount of grunt and power it has down bottom end. It's, it's quite, uh, it's quite something actually. They are very vibey because obviously it's a V-twin, but very, very vibey. Vibes coming through my feet, through my hands. Not uncomfortable, mind. Going back to that hay fever band on the intro. You know, being out in the countryside like this, normally it would take me ten minutes or so to stop before I start. Had it not been recommended to me by a friend, I'd have never said in a million years that that would work. What went first? Oh yeah, wheel comes up. <laughs> Where can I have a little chat? This might be alright here actually. In fact, I've one of the first places, one of the very first places I came on my channel was here. Have a look. <laughs> oh, seventeen plate. My hands are hurting already. That's <laughs> that's the kick. Oh. Kropovich. <sighs> That's why it's growling at me. Um, already branded. Hold on. Power support seat. I know he's spent a lot of money on uh, all the little bits and bobs. Oh, it does sound delicious. Where's the um, menu button then? Street. Okay. Okay, traction is on. I'm out this way for a while, we'll go up here. I just noticed there's bugs all over me mesh jacket, so I uh, will be keeping my visor down. Does sound, that does sound amazing. Listen to this. <laughs> Definitely something milky going off there with that. Let me give this a clean. I love how with this uh, Ultimate Add-ons case, you don't need to take it out of the thing. You can just rip your case off and. Um, take a photo but I've uh, cleaned the bike uh, cleaned left it on when I cleaned the bike of the week and it's it's left this a bit milky so I need to just give it a clean outside and the inside I must say, Kev, 
if you're watching my friend um you keep your house housekeeping inside this tank bag is beautiful it's lovely and neat in here that's better mm -mm. that is delicious that is lovely For all those asking, some new summer gloves, Furigan Jet. Light as a feather, can't even tell you got them on. Lovely. Only thing I don't like is, I'll show you. See? Yes, you use your thumb. Works with your thumb, not anything else. Which is a bit of a crap design, but apart from that, they're lovely. School and also while I'm at it, Furigan Atom mesh jacket, and I love it. Furigan Steed Kevlar's and TCX Mood boots suits me down to the ground. That does <laughs> mood. Oh, yes, that's been a while since I've been up here. Well, honestly this feels like a completely different bike now I don't know if that's because I've, I've just come off the GT before I jumped on the R this feels very familiar just like the GT to me to me the GT was a way better bike way better in every respect I guess it depends what you're into you now if you're into touring and things like that like I am obviously then the GT is gonna win hands down if you're just in for a up for a hooligan ride every now and then even though the GT does that very very well um, I guess that the R would be uh, more suited to you Gretton and Orport, let's go this way lovely little village this is used to race in uh, this little village all here there in one of my bands many many moons ago I bet that house next door used to love that <laughs> I will say the uh, cliff lane. Oops. That was a bad move. I didn't even check. There's no way I'm going to be able to get make that easy. Uh, the car comes down there. I'm screwed. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Have a quick look down here. I will say that although these mirrors are beautiful. Oh, what are we going? The uh, visibility is a bit crap. Oh dear. Bit of uh, debris down here. Make a nice photo that will. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit on this bench. <sighs> I am. It makes a change. Where are we? Let's have a look. of a useless fact that I find fascinating. Apparently, the spring that emerges from these hillsides has never run dry. And all day, every day, 
in all weathers, men, women and children, had come and fill buckets up out of this spring, out of these troughs. And the farmer would take the water in his cart and sell it in the village for one old penny a bucketful. That's amazing. Before 1940, it provided this village with drinking water every day. It's amazing. Acres and acres and acres of unspoilt countryside. Just look at that. Just sit here, I could, all night. <laughs> well, can't sit here all day. Can't put my visor down either. Check this out. There's that much humidity and heat in the air. Check the front of my visor. Oh. A layer of moisture on the outside. Oh, do you know it's so peaceful. Just listen, it's nothing. Oh, amazing. This but this might be my new favourite little place. Telling you where it is either. <laughs> Light's dropping a bit. I ain't got my, my uh, night glasses, so I'll best bugger off. I've noticed that, you must have all noticed that as well, folks. It's nine o'clock nearly, ten to nine, and the nights are starting, even though we're only early August. Feels like the nights are getting shorter already. I'm very glad to say I've never been on this road before. I'm going to make it my duty to turn down the roads that I always go by from now on. I've been by this road a million times for a long, long time. I'm enjoying this because it genuinely feels like the GT to me. Oh, look at this, illuminated switch gear. <laughs> I think I'm secretly wanting a KTM just because of the fine, the fine um, touches that they do. Lovely it says. Oh man, look at that cottage. I mainly took those photos there so I could GPS my position. There we go. This might make sense now. No. No idea. Old-fashioned yellow lamp post. The only place I can think of where we are is near your grave. But I don't know if that's right or not. Oh man, I, I absolutely love getting lost on the bike. I love it. That's part of, that's biking to me. Half tank of fuel. Absolutely no idea where I am. Light failing fast only got a dark visor on and it's summer so I can't have my visor up I've got no night glasses so when the light goes I'm screwed very cool yeah it's the Yulegrave Road isn't it ah yeah I know I'm at I know I'm at uh, I think we'll go this way very good very 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 good what a beautiful area to live and like I say there's a lot of humidity in the air because the outside of my visor is um got loads of moisture on it i mean we're still 20 degrees and it's uh 9, 9 pm yeah just over nine o'clock just past nine o'clock again all the switch gear on this feels just like the gt well it is the same switch gear as the gt um it feels proper it feels solid and expensive whereas um the switch gear on that new Super Duke car is crap. 
I think even Chopsy was saying the same about that. It feels like you could uh, break it and at any second. It just, it's just rubbish. And it feels far from expensive. It just feels flimsy, actually. Well, this, uh, yeah, feels great. Oh, that. I have to pick all the bloody flies out of this mesh jacket. That's the only thing that's bad about a mesh jacket, you know. Summertime. The only time you're using a mesh jacket, obviously. Picking bloody flies out of all holes. <laughs> ah, hang on. I wonder if you could get like a compressed air gun and just blow them out. I must admit, I really, really can't see much. A lot of moisture down here. Don't leave my car, I need your brake light so I can see. Alright folks, that'll do, it's getting too dark to see anyway. Too dark, too dark to see. So uh, there'll be more to come on this, plenty, plenty more. So, as I say, it's come for a little summer holiday at uh, Wildbad HQ. Right now it's really, it really is too dark down here. Even with main beam on. Good night folks. Thanks very much. Just a little bimble. As I said, loads more to come. Be good, be careful, and be kind. See you soon. Big thanks to Kev as well for allowing me, or employing me, to be his babysitter. Cheers, pal. Tusen tak.